Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. I have one of our new family favorites to share with you. Now this is an Asian dish that is super easy to make, super delicious. This is a Japanese comfort food. It's called Nikujaga. I'm sorry if I butchered that. And what it is, is beef and potatoes. It's basically a Japanese beef stew that is sweet and savory. It has sake in it. It has dashi, which is kind of like uh, for a Japanese person cooking, if a recipe instead of chicken stock, they would use dashi. Dashi has um, some great flavors with uh, bonito flakes. I believe is what, if I'm saying that correctly, and that is a dried smoked tuna flakes, and also it has kombu seaweed in it. So it tastes very much like it's from the sea. It is absolutely spectacular. You can make your own, or I have found this at my Asian market, and it is basically dashi granules, and it is awesome because I don't wanna sit there and make um, dashi every time I want a dish. So this is great for miso soups. Uh, a lot of Japanese cooking asks for dashi. So this is an easier way to have dashi on hand. We also are gonna be using mirin as our sweetener. If you do not have mirin, you can use sugar. So let's get over to the stove and let me show you. Oh, and the other awesome part about this is this recipe doesn't use like a big beef roast or anything. It uses shaved steak or shaved beef. Now this time I am using just the stuff, um, not as high quality as I've used in the past. This is, got this at Walmart, and this is what you would use to do a French dip or a Philly cheesesteak. So let's get over the stove and start making this amazing Japanese comfort food. Our recipe calls for onions, potatoes, carrots, and beef. Then we have our seasonings. So let's get cooking. We are starting by putting just a little teaspoon, a half teaspoon of oil, so in the pan. Not a lot, we just wanna get that around, and then we're gonna put our meat in. Now I'm going to cook my meat in two separate batches. We're gonna cook our meat. until it's, the red color is gone. We wanna cook our meat at a high enough temperature so we don't get a lot of water sitting at the bottom of our pan. We don't wanna boil our meat, we wanna fry it up. This soup is best to make ahead, let it cool, and then heat it back up. That is what it's known for. So we are gonna take this out and move on to our next batch. Remember, I'm making a double batch here. The meat is not seasoned at all. It's so strange. Okay, our second batch is almost done. Now we're gonna leave some of this in here. We're gonna take half of this out and we're gonna leave the, other re the rest of this meat in here to help season our potatoes and carrots. Notice how this time there's not as much liquid on the bottom. That's more what you want. And this will keep some of our beef from getting tough from all this um, cooking because it's so shaped so thin. You don't have to cook it long. Okay, now we're putting in our potatoes and carrots. Turning that up to high. And we want this to cook. We want our potatoes to be um, almost see-through, you know, like you can start, you can tell they're cooking. Okay, let's check to see if our potatoes are getting translucent. Not really. Just, just keep them going. Again, there is no salt, no pepper. This is craziness. Craziness. Okay, I ended up switching my pan. This has a far more base to it to help my potatoes cook. 
We do, don't want to put a lid on this because we want the liquids to evaporate out of the potatoes and carrots because then when I pour in the dashi and the sake and the soy sauce, it's all going to get sucked into the potato and the carrot. So this is not a juicy um, dish. Now, I personally like it a little juicy, so um, I may add extra dashi and just a little bit of all the extra seasonings. That is up to you. When I transferred the pan, I noticed that I had tons of brown crispy bits in that pan that I was not gonna use anymore. So I did not wanna get rid of all that flavor that needs to be in my new pan. So what I did was I just poured some of the dashi stock in the old pan and stirred up all those crispy bits so then I will still have all those great flavors. And it's now in my amazing, D5 all clad weeknight pan that is absolutely fantastic. All right, it's time to add our onions in. Weird that we did not put onions in at the beginning. Why would we not do that? But this is how you make Japanese comfort food. Nikujaga. Just get those stirred in and let them cook for a few minutes. You may need to adjust your heat down to a lower temperature so that you don't get any burning or it's dry. This is really dry at this point. Okay, we just let that cook for a little bit with the onions, coated it all. Now it's time to put our beef back in. Add our four tablespoons of sake. Our mirin or sugar is already in our broth here and I'm using two cups. And see all those chunks were from that other. Right, now I started with two tablespoons of sugar because I usually use mirin and, um, but this time I'm using sugar so I just want to make sure I don't make it too sweet. It is supposed to be sweet, sweet and savory. Oh, it looks beautiful. Now we can cover this and let it cook. We are going to let that simmer for 10 minutes and then check it. It's important that you do not overcook this dish. Now, for me, when it seems that I'm making a beef stew the regular way, you know, you're cooking your beef so long, you're potatoes start to break apart. That's not supposed to be that way with this dish. Your potatoes should stay whole. They are not to thicken some sauce. It's, it's very different, very scary. I didn't use pepper. I didn't use salt. I didn't use any garlic. The dashi has such great smoked fish flavor and this salty sea flavor. And then you add that with the sake and the soy sauce. That's how you're getting your salt. It is absolutely spectacular. My kids love it, and I hope you do too. Now, while that's cooking, we are going to um, make these look a little prettier. And when I reheat the dish, I'm gonna put these in there and um, some long stemmed pieces of this for some green. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. We are looking beautiful. We're gonna give it a quick stir just to Distribute. I still have juices in my pan. I'm going to add my soy sauce. Now we're going to cover and let go 10 more minutes. Mine is set on low heat, but I can still hear it just bubbling slightly. We don't want it on a high setting because our potatoes are going to, um, you know, fall apart. So we just want it cooked through. So we have it on our lowest setting and I could just hear, just hear some noises and it's working. It's not just sitting there. So we'll just leave it. And there's so much in here that my pan lid doesn't want to shut all the way. Leave it 10 more minutes. Okay, let's check to see if our potatoes are cooked through. Yes, they are. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. I hope you enjoy this Nukujaga. I wanted to show you this amazing recipe because my family loves it so much. And I cannot wait for us all to gobble that up with